Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to this uh, webinar uh, organized by Sintu and Silverdraft. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. So this webinar is recorded, being recorded as we speak. Uh, so you will have access to it via the Sintu uh, YouTube channel or the website. And if, if you have any question, uh, please keep it for the Q&A panel, or you can also uh, chat uh, on Zoom, on Rob, my colleague Rob will be the moderator today uh, for this chat. Uh, so there will be three three, three speakers uh, today. So I'm Dominic uh, Poliquin. Uh, I'm uh, in charge of product management for Sin2. Uh, and I will let uh, Nicholas and Hardy uh, introduce themselves uh, when they will be uh, speaking in the next few minutes. Uh, so today's agenda is really about uh, introducing Sintu Cloud for some of you who don't know what we do, and uh, also the Sintu SDK, which is a, a new SDK that we have built to be able to stream our high-resolution 3D meshes uh, in, in such an application as Unreal or Unity. Uh, then uh, Nicholas will be showing you how we deal with Sintu Cloud on the, the Unreal platform to create rich uh, media experiences, mixing uh, the as built conditions on some uh, 3D animations. And uh, Hardy will be presenting the Silver Draft solutions for processing and VR. So this uh, should take about 45 minutes, including Q&A. Uh, so let me start by introducing Cloud to you. Uh, Sintu is really at the convergence of reality capture and uh, digital twins. We've built a platform called Sintu Cloud uh, that has been uh, uh, in the market now for about three years uh, that is running on Amazon or Azure that will make your uh, reality capture data fully uh, cloud compatible. For example, uh, laser, uh, laser scan data will be now cloud compatible. That means you can view them in a web browser, you can share, you can uh, enrich them with annotations on measurements. Uh, you can uh, not only share, but you can also distribute the data back to your uh, various uh, team members around the world. Uh, so it's really about making your laser scan data fully uh, cloud compatible and collaborative. So Cinto Cloud uh, leverages a unique technology that, you, that has been built by the team in Cinto for many, many years, uh, which will take your point cloud data coming from the laser scan and turn it into a very high resolution 3D mesh. So one mesh per scan. And this, uh, this will have various uh, advantages. The first one is that by doing this point cloud to mesh transformation, we will make the data about 10 to 20 times smaller in size. So and that will be done before the upload. So let's say you have 100 gigabytes of point cloud data. What will be uploaded to the cloud will be only five to 10 gigabytes. That's number one. Number two is that this mesh now is highly streamable. We can stream it very fast in a web browser with no plugin to install, uh, making it very easy to access the data uh, for any team member. But also the mesh is a much, much better way to view and interpret your reality capture data. So we make the data much easier to view and interpret by anybody without any uh, experience in using point clouds. And last but not least, with this point cloud to mesh transformation, we retain the complete uh, accuracy, density, and structure of the project. So, so we can do the inverse transformations. We can bring back the mesh as a point cloud. Uh, so that, that means that we can use this platform to distribute also your data as a point cloud, because at some point in your process, you may need to have a RCP file or point cloud file into Revit or Navisworks or AutoCAD for doing your scan to beam. Uh, workflows. Or you can also, of course, download the meshes uh, in order to do clash detection in Navisworks, for example. So point cloud to mesh, mesh to point clouds is very unique to Cinto Cloud. So we use the, this uh, platform Cinto Cloud for various uh, industries uh, covering uh, everything like automobile, uh, car manufacturing, uh, energy, oil and gas, uh, 
we also have customers in the, of course, in the beam and construction industries, uh, you know, developing or building uh, multi-million dollar buildings. Uh, on, you will see how they use the platform. So there are three main value propositions coming uh, with SIN2. Uh, each, each one comes, of course, with its own set of uh, core features. Uh, the first one on the left is all, uh, all about collaboration and sharing. It's about viewing, of course, the data in a web browser from anywhere at any time. We also uh, ver have various tools to manage the access to this data, to org organize this data in various subfolders, which we call work zones. You can, of course, enrich uh, your data with uh, measurements, annotations, issues that you can share, export as PDF, as PCF, etc. This is, a, I say, the main value proposition why people would subscribe initially uh, to Sintu Cloud. The second type of value proposition is around quality control. You can connect, we can connect Sintu Cloud to, let's say, Autodesk Beam 360 in order to pull a BIM model or a CAD model and overlay it over the scanned data in our viewer. And then you can visually detect differences between the as built conditions on the design intent. And of course, you can document those issues and then push them back in other platforms, BIM coordination platforms, such as BIM 360, BIM Track, or Procore. The third type of value proposition we have with Sintu Cloud is around asset management. It's all about viewing your equipment in the, in the as-built conditions, this equipment being listed from your CAD models or being automatically detected and tagged using our AI engine. So we can detect equipment uh, in, in your scanned data, uh, and this is a, something that will be released in a few weeks, oh, no, sorry, in a few months from now. This is already in beta for some of, you, some of you that may want to test this asset management capability already. So Cinto uh, Cloud is a cloud connected, of course, uh, platform, uh, starting with, uh, it's, a, it's a scanning hardware agnostic on multimodal platform. So we can take any scan data coming from any device using the E57, uh, RCP or FLS files. We can also now read a mobile LiDAR indoor data and soon we'll be able to, to use uh, on read and upload a, a drone data as well. So the data is being turned into a mesh uh, locally on your computer before the upload and everything in the cloud is mesh based. Uh, we can cloud connect to a Cinto cloud to BIM 360, BIM track and Procore as I just mentioned. Connecting to BIM360 will be mostly to pull models uh, from uh, BIM360, being a Revit model, a Navisworks model. We use a Forge API, the Autodesk Forge APIs to do this translation to our format. But we can also read IFC uh, models from the disk directly. When it comes to distributing the data and having the data back on your computer for design, uh, you can do that in various formats, being E57, RCP, RCS. Or you can also export uh, uh, mesh-based models in FBX, OBJ, or STL. And of course, you can produce various reports in PDF or issues in BCF. BCF meaning BIM collaboration format. So this is all about streaming. As you understand, the core value proposition of Cinto Cloud is about streaming your high-resolution mesh-based scan data or reality capture data in various, on various devices being that desktop, laptops, tablets, mobile tablets, but now also in Unreal on Unity. And let me go a little deeper into this one. Uh, so Cinto Cloud, uh, after three years of being uh, sold on the market, uh, is being used by more than 250 companies worldwide, a lot of them in the US, and they've been uploading more than 1.3 million scans to the platform. So it's very reliable platform, very trustful platform. Also, I should add, uh, know, uh, I should let you know that SIN2 is also SOC2 type 2 compliant. So we have the highest level of cybersecurity. And so your, your data will be really uh, secure on our platform. 2 billion square feet of data uploaded already. This is about 200 million square meters. 
It's about two, si two times the, side of, uh, the, the size of Paris. So uh, the topic of the day is about laser scanning for the, for the metaverse. So before uh, letting Nick show you that, uh, let me explain where we started from. Uh, we believe that the existing as-built conditions uh, create the foundations for the metaverse, which is a, a virtual replica of any uh, physical environment. Uh, this virtual replica that you can use then to collaborate, that you can use to operate eventually your physical world, that you can use to simulate on run what-if scenarios, and you can also use for analysis. And it's very important to know that this metaverse is globally speaking based on polygons, on texture mapping. So it's all mesh-based already, all mesh-based data experiences. And it's very interesting to see that in, indeed what we bring to, the, to this uh, landscape is all, also mesh-based. So it's very good. A fit between what we do, mesh based on what the metaverse is expecting. The problem there is today is that when you need to bring these as built conditions uh, into the metaverse, did, uh, as a mesh, I would say as a polygon, this will take weeks of modeling effort that you need to spend to optimize your as built conditions and make it a real time compatible. So you will need to optimize the polygon count, the texture sizes. And this can be a, a bottleneck for, for doing uh, what you want to do in the metaverse. So this is why we have introduced, we are introducing the mesh streaming capability. What we do today is that we will stream in live uh, the as-built conditions inside the Unreal platform, the same you, so that you get the exact same experience in our, that, than, than in our web app. And you will mix this with your uh, 3D uh, data or 3D animations coming from uh, the uh, CAD models or BIM models using Datasmith. So in fact, what we do, we take the best of both worlds to create those rich scan on BIM or scan on CAD experiences. So just to give you a glimpse of what we do, this is uh, uh, just a quick animation. You see the data is being streamed live in the Unreal window that you can see on the right-hand side. And we, and we augmented, we augmented these as-built conditions with some 3D animations. And then you can navigate scan to scan to see this uh, animation inside your as-built conditions from various angles. But Nick will be showing you more about this. So I will leave uh, this part to Nick in a few minutes. So what we have built to do that is a Scene 2 SDK. With a Scene 2, with a Scene 2 SDK, uh, you can uh, connect any desktop app, being uh, Unreal today, but also Unity or any modeling app. You can connect your desktop app to Scene 2 Cloud. So the Scene 2 and SDK will handle the authentication, and then you can select the project in Scene 2 Cloud. You can even select the work zone. You can select the scan data. And for every uh, user's point of view, moving is a desktop app we will be streaming the exact uh, mesh, uh, mesh information needed for this uh, point of view in real time. Uh, so this SDK is available now in, in beta. It's uh, uh, available as a C++ or a C or a C Sharp for Windows. And it's mostly optimized for scan-to-scan -scan navigation. But again, I will leave this, this part to, to Nicholas. So Nicholas? If you don't mind uh, showing what you have now. Hey, Dominic. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicholas Zarnik, um, Customer Success Manager here at Sintu. Uh, I work uh, mostly with our AEC industry customers and define workflows and uh, document best practices for using Sintu Cloud. Uh, my background is in architecture with a focus in uh, BIM coordination, uh, real-time visualizations and uh, immersive technologies like virtual and uh, augmented reality. Uh, Dominic, can you uh, pull up the next slide, please? Yeah, we should have a video. You can fire that up now. So before we jump into Unreal, uh, we'll show the sample project uh, that was provided by our good friends at SSOE Group. And this is for their uh, David T. Howard Middle School project in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So we have Sintu open in our Chrome browser here. And we can switch to scan mode to display the 2D panoramic images 
that have been captured by the scanner at these locations uh, on site. Uh, we can navigate scan to scan by clicking the icons. And uh, now we can switch the display mode to 3D surface to view the high resolution 3D mesh that's been created from the, uh, the source point cloud data. So here, what we're, what we're looking at is, is the high resolution mesh in the, in the web browser window of our Sintu project. And we can switch to uh, 3D RGB display mode, which shows the color information from the 2D panel image overlaid onto our high resolution mesh as a texture. And because this is a 3D view, we can stream 3D design models in combination with the as-built mesh, uh, all in your typical uh, web browser uh, window. So this is what we're looking at here. So now we'll switch over to our Unreal Editor and show the workflow for using the uh, Sintu plugin. Uh, in the editor, I can open the plugin and click Login to allow uh, Unreal to connect to my uh, Sintu account. And now once that connection is made, uh, we'll see the uh, list of my Sintu projects populate in the toolbar here on the left side. So then from here, I can select a specific project to load, uh, navigate to the desired uh, work zones or folders within my project, and then choose a, speci a specific scan location to begin streaming into the editor window. So we've selected the scan, and here we see the high resolution mesh from Sintu uh, being streamed into the editor in, uh, in real time. And by default, the meshes are streamed with uh, full color textures, which you can see as I rotate my camera view. And similar to the uh, Sintu web app, we can navigate scan to scan by clicking the uh, scan icon nodes at each location. So here I've moved to the second scan location. Uh, which is now streaming in the window. But I just want to point out that we're, we're not constrained to this specific location. I can move the camera view and, and fly through the scene uh, using my mouse and keyboard uh, here in the editor window. So here I'm flying the camera through uh, different points of view and looking at the, uh, the data from, um, from many spots. And I'll clarify here that uh, because we currently stream one scan location at a time, we're able to display the highest resolution mesh uh, within the editor. And now I've switched to uh, VR view and I'm using my Oculus, uh, AKA Meta Quest VR headset um, that is also tethered to my laptop with the link cable. So here I can view the streamed in mesh uh, in real time uh, in my VR view to get that one-to-one -one scale uh, view here. And I can also navigate scan to scan by using my motion controllers and uh, clicking on the different scan nodes at each location. So here I'm looking uh, at the, uh, the high resolution mesh and I can toggle off the color texture to view the underlying surface of the mesh uh, being streamed into the editor. So this is just a quick example of uh, being able to uh, view and, and use these high resolution meshes within the editor. So in this next series of clips, I'll talk about uh, enriching the streamed as-built conditions uh, with 3D models and animated content. So here I'm in VR mode and we brought in some 3D content to simulate uh, preparations happening on a construction site, for example. Um, there's a few uh, entourage models and some animated construction vehicles and equipment. And I can navigate around the scene uh, by jumping to various scan locations. Uh, but the, the, the key takeaway here is the ability to use mesh-based scan data as the static environment for real-time simulations. So here I've uh, switched to a new scan position and I can look at this scene uh, from this point of view here. So now I'll uh, take some time to walk through the process of building out a fairly simple scene uh, to simulate the construction phase of, of the sample project. We have our mesh-based scan data streamed in from Sintu into the editor. And I've also used Datasmith to import the design models from Revit uh, into Unreal. So here I'm placing the structural design model um, from Revit 
uh, into our scene in Unreal. And see here we can overlay our, our streamed in as built mesh with uh, BIM and CAD models. And using my mouse and keyboard, I can move my camera and fly around the scene to get a better look at, uh, at the model and the as-built mesh um, combined together. And I can also switch to a uh, new stamp position to, to load um, the new mesh here. So here I'm getting a better look at the design model overlaid onto our uh, streamed in as-built conditions. So next, uh, I'm pulling in a, a crane model uh, in preparation for an animated sequence uh, that'll show an example of collision detection using our streamed in mesh. So here, uh, I'm gonna use the, uh, just the basic sequencer tool uh, within Unreal uh, to animate the crane. And I also wanna point out that um, everything we're gonna see in this, in this demo is done with little uh, to no coding involved. So I've made small modifications to the crane model using blueprints, uh, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, but everything we're seeing here can be done with little to no uh, coding experience. So with our scene and our level sequencer set up uh, in the editor, uh, we can you know, run this simulation uh, in play mode. So now that that's set up, uh, I can jump I'm going to jump here into our VR play mode. And as this plays through, the main point we're communicating here is the ability to have the stream to mesh interact and respond to other 3D models or content uh, in the scene. So when the crane overlaps with the stream to mesh, uh, that collision is detected and highlights the crane model uh, in this red color. And this is just one basic example, but you can apply the same, you know, same concept to other advanced scenarios like factory layouts and and planning for manufacturing and automotive industries, um, or things like maintenance and repair simulations for oil and gas. So there's tons of possibilities here. So far, we touched on example scenarios like site preparation phase and construction phase simulations. So this third example is all about visualizing how the final design uh, fits into the real world as built context. So here I'm placing the exterior facade model that's also been imported to Unreal through Datasmith uh, into our scene, along with the underlying uh, structural model that's already been uh, placed here. And while visualizing designs in uh, real world context is nothing new, uh, being able to stream reality capture data in real time to provide that context like we're showing here uh, is really the game changer. And when we talk about real-time visualizations that incorporate uh, as-built scan data, I think we're really just starting to see hints of this convergence of reality capture, uh, digital twins, and what a lot of folks are calling uh, the metaverse today. And ultimately, uh, if this metaverse that everyone's envisioning uh, does end up being an evolved version of today's internet, experienced primarily through real-time 3D content, um, then we know platforms like Unreal are going to be playing an important role in how that ultimate metaverse comes to fruition. So without getting too deep in the woods here, um, bridging the gap between reality capture and real-time platforms like Unreal, like we're doing here, uh, is one small piece of, of that puzzle. And what we're showing in the sample here of our Sintu plugin, uh, streaming in the real world as built context um, is our solution in, in that ongoing effort. So here we have a solid foundation for building out visualizations that engage stakeholders and, and the general public, uh, leveraging real-time streamed reality capture data. And I wanna give a quick shout out here to uh, Mark CQ with HOK and the teams at WSP and Architecture 49. Uh, they're currently using our plugin as part of their center block project. And Mark talks about this in a presentation he did for the uh, Un Unreal Build Architecture Series. So if you haven't, haven't seen that, I recommend checking it out on YouTube. It's a, it's a pretty incredible project and some uh, really excellent work they're doing with Sintu and, uh, and Unreal Engine. And again, here we can, we can move the camera around the scene to view uh, from any angle. 
And then we can also uh, jump into VR mode here um, to again uh, view that scene in one to one true scale and navigate around the scene uh, using the scan to scan uh, navigation and uh, motion controllers. So just a few examples of how to use our streamed in meshes, um, both on, on desktop and in VR uh, view modes. In this next and final example, uh, we'll be using a data set from our friends at NOR Technologies to run through an equipment uh, installation scenario. So I have the Sintu project uh, open in my Chrome browser. And when we jump into scan mode, uh, we can see the as-built conditions of this uh, power mechanical room. So we can navigate scan to scan. And uh, when we switch to surface mode, uh, we get a great look here at the complex uh, existing conditions displayed as a high resolution mesh that's been created from the source scan data. And we see these meshes stream into our browser window as you jump from scan to scan. So back in the editor, we'll go through the same process of using the plugin to connect to Unreal to our Sintu account and pull in our Sintu projects. Yep, so we have the, uh, the plugin open here in Unreal, and we are uh, loading in the uh, Power Mechanical Room project from NOR. And then we can select the specific uh, work zones, folders, and then select the specific scan location to load in here. So here with the uh, meshes streaming into the editor, uh, we can navigate uh, scan to scan. I think this is a really good example of, uh, of, of complex geometry and elements like pipes, conduits, uh, valves, meters, um, these really complex existing conditions um, that you wouldn't want to spend time modeling and, and, and optimizing for, for real-time use. And we can see here that, the, that the, this mesh-based uh, as-built data is being streamed very really fast here in, in Unreal Engine. So here at this location, I'm, I'm looking around, um, being able to view all this complex uh, mesh-based geometry. And, and for this one, we wanna show an, uh, kind of a, an equipment install scenario where a facility manager, for example, uh, could use various 3D models to, to test fit and, and clearance check um, new equipment that's being installed against uh, you know, what's as built or against the existing conditions. So here we're pulling in equipment models to see how they fit um, into their real world context shown as the uh, is streamed in as built mesh here. So again, we can iterate very fast. We can pull in um, you know, any kind of 3D models and overlay them onto the, the meshes that are being streamed in real time uh, in our editor view. And then again, we can switch to uh, from desktop to VR mode um, to see the 3D model uh, and the as-built mesh in a true one-to-one uh, -one scale. So that should be uh, the conclusion of this, uh, this video here. Just viewing the, uh, the data in, uh, in VR mode. So those are just a, a few quick examples and use cases for, for using the stream mesh data. Um, and as I mentioned uh, in the animated crane sequence, uh, the meshes being streamed into Unreal do have collisions uh, pre-computed. And that's what's described here in the second and third uh, bullet points here on this slide. Um, but what, what I modified on the crane model, for example, uh, was being able to, to turn the crane to the red highlighted color. Um, so in the editor, I enabled overlap events for the crane uh, using blueprints. And I defined the crane to highlight in red when a collision or overlap event uh, occurs uh, at runtime. Uh, Dom, can you go to the next slide, please? And so for physics mode, something I didn't really touch on in the example scenarios, but the, the streamed in meshes do support uh, physics simulation and, uh, and gravity. So just a quick note here that if, if you do have the need to use models and content in your scene, 
with the physics and gravity enabled, they will work in conjunction with the, uh, the meshes that are being streamed in real time. Uh, next. Uh, yep, so that's it for me. Uh, I'll hand it over to Hardy to introduce Silverdraft and talk about our partnership. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Hardy Tankersley. I'm a VP of Visualization here at Silverdraft. And um, just wanted to give you guys a quick intro to what we do and how we integrate with, um, with Sintu. Uh, Dom, can you advance the slides? Thank you. Um, go ahead and go one more. You don't need to sit through the <laughs> video. But uh, uh, so as a quick introduction for those of you who may not know us, you know, we're dedicated to building high performance workflows for visualization, starting with ultra high performance compute. Um, we work with customers that are trying to render big complex environments in real time. And for our AEC customers, we like to say it's easier to move pixels than dirt. Um, go ahead, Tom, next slide. We, uh, we're a complete solutions company. Um, so we deliver a variety of technology services, but starting with hardware, but also software, networking, storage, and displays to support custom workflows um, that extends into specific engineering efforts uh, or any, any big problem you're trying to solve, um, we design the, the full workflow and that can include all these components. Next slide, please. Our main product lines are um, desktops and servers with high GPU and high CPU counts for these big graphic jobs like photogrammetry or point cloud uh, processing. You know, just for example, we have a single 4 e rack mount system that can take up to 10 uh, NVIDIA A6000 GPUs. So it's all about high compute density in a small, cool and efficient footprint. Uh, and that technology extends into desktops and even laptops, which um, a lot of our customers are using to do this scan data on location. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we work with Sintu to optimize the end-to-end -end workflow for scanning large-scale locations uh, and facilities, processing all of those data sets, multiple sets of scan data into high-resolution point cloud and building high-quality mesh from that. This process can take a long time when you have a lot of data and every minute or hour you can save is huge. So when sometimes um, when you're collecting all this data and you're trying to, you process it locally before uploading it to the cloud, that process, again, depending on the data, could take uh, you know, 20 minutes or an hour or a day. Um, and if you can shave half of that time off by using some optimized hardware, uh, it's incredibly valuable to, to save that time. Um, you know, well, the, the other key piece is to see the workflow on the point cloud into Unreal in the game engine and the power you get from being able to do that, like being able to render it in real time in a VR headset. So the next slide, we'll just talk quickly about VR uh, and being able to render these scenes in a headset, being able to see the, the scene at a full one-to-one -one scale is incredibly powerful. Uh, when we're working with high resolution headsets like the Vario XR3 or VR3, running at high frame rate without dropping frames requires a lot of compute power. And then when you start to integrate uh, complex models and more geometry into the scene, like you were seeing in that video, you're adding even more burden on the rendering. So we also think it's important to have a, a professional grade render system. Um, and we have a lot of customers using things like these high resolution Vario headsets where you can really see all of the pixels. You're not losing a lot of resolution just in the display. And of course, being able to walk through it at one-to-one -one scale gives you much more accurate um, simulation and uh, uh, you can do much better analysis. You can catch more issues um, when you can really navigate it at, at, at full scale. And then being able to integrate scan data with the rendered models to simulate these new designs uh, gives you better design decisions because you can really see the, 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 the world that you're trying to build. Uh, next slide. So finally, I will just point out that our, our core focus on compute performance is based on these core principles. 
you know, when you're doing this kind of work, it's important you have a professional grade system, not just a hand assembled you know, game machine. You need reliable components, optimal cooling and the best performance. So uh, that's our, our, our story is about being able to manipulate these large data sets that were previously, you know, basically impossible to do or would take too long. Now with enough compute power, with enough CPU and GPU optimally deployed and the Sintu cloud integration, we've kind of opened up a whole new set of applications and solutions that, uh, that can be incredibly useful and compelling and also have a, a great business case for, uh, for this AEC market. And that is all for me. Thank you all for uh, taking the time to tune into this. And please contact us if you would like to discuss any of this in detail. And thanks again to our uh, friends at Sintu for uh, letting us help out. Thank you, Hardy. This is the end of the presentation. Sorry, I, I missed your last slide uh, while you were talking about it. Um, now it's time for Q&A. Rob, do we have a few questions we can answer? Uh, yeah, we had a lot of questions. <laughs> they were uh, pretty specific, but I, I think uh, Dominique and, and David, maybe you guys could jump in on this, but a lot of the questions came in around what we're showing here was unreal. Can we do the same thing with Unity? Yes, so uh, I can take this one. Uh, yes, we have other uh, partners working with the Sintu SDK on building uh, Unity apps as we speak, absolutely. So we have selected to show Unreal today because we have an agreement on, we have also, uh, we were a mega grant uh, recipient uh, from Unreal. So thank you, uh, the Unreal team for that. On uh, They have been very active with us. Uh, yeah, but the Sintu SDK is, uh, uh, is a desktop app agnostic. We can run with any other app. Uh, another question was just kind of in general, like how does Sintu connect work taking the point cloud to the mesh? Is there any loss of accuracy or precision? Oh, I can take this one as well. So uh, no, Sintu Connect will do those uh, this point cloud to mesh transformation. And again, uh, this process will not impact neither the accuracy, nor the density, nor the structure of the point cloud. And the best way to show that is that when you do the inverse transformation, so we bring back the mesh to its uh, point cloud format. And if you compare, the source point cloud to the reconstructed point cloud, you would not notice any difference, okay? So there's no uh, compromise on accuracy or density with this process. And this is what makes Sintu Cloud very unique. Okay, another question uh, that came in from several people was how do they get access to the SDK? Uh, first, they have to be a Sintu subscriber, of course, they have to have a uh, a Sintu Cloud subscription. And then uh, you just, they just ask, they, they send an email to uh, support at Sintu.com requesting access to the SDK. And that will be uh, straightforward. Okay. And I told them also to reach out to sales at Sintu.com or yeah. contact at Sintu.com as well. Absolutely. So yeah. we, we will definitely get a hold of you if you send us an email. Yeah. Um, but we, so just yeah. on this one, we're since it's the very beginning of this uh, new adventure uh, with Unreal on Unity, we're really interested in discussing uh, with uh, people that are interested, discussing about their use case and uh, if do they have this in-house capability to develop this Unreal or Unity uh, apps. If not, this is why we bring in partners like Silverdraft to help us with this part of the workflow. Uh, on the, so yeah, having a discussion <clears throat> about what you want to do <clears throat> on how we can help is really important as well. Okay. Uh, there were several questions that were kind of focused around hardware. You know, what what is the recommended hardware requirements? Uh, I think David's done a really good job of answering that. Uh, David, I don't know if you want to just put a general statement out there around hardware requirements. Absolutely. Most of the hardware processing uh, for converting from a uh, point cloud to a mesh is done in the Sintu Connect uh, application. So I definitely recommend uh, visiting uh, the Sintu Connect uh, 
website. Uh, just about any system can be um, used depending on how quickly uh, you want your, your scans processed, but they're all processed in uh, parallel. So they get converted to meshes and then uploaded to this into a website. As far as uh, hardware requirements for, for viewing uh, goes, I mean, you can you know simply go to the Sintu website, which is about any machine, and be able to view your scans there. And for uh, viewing in the Unreal Engine, uh, you may consider more beefier um, hardware resources, especially if you want to do uh, VR. And we are still uh, deciding on hardware requirements, but there's a wide array of uh, flexibility as we continue to improve performance. Does that answer your the question? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I can, I can add to that too. This is Nick. Uh, I think there was a question about uh, which hardware I was using for uh, my, my Unreal demonstrations. So I'm on an MSI uh, GS Stealth. Uh, it's an i7 processor and I'm using an RTX uh, 2070 uh, graphics card. All righty. And then uh, I think we'll start wrapping up here. But Dominic, here's another one for you. Uh, the question is, why is the mesh view on the web browser currently limited to scan view? Once you switch to 3D navigation, only the point cloud is visible. And they're asking, shouldn't a mesh model be viewable from multi viewports or viewpoints? This is a great question. Uh, when you switch from scan view to uh, 3D navigation, what you see looks like a mesh, but uh, sorry, looks like a point cloud, but this is not the point cloud. Okay, this is the these are all the vertices from all the meshes from all the scans in a lower level of detail, uh, you know, mode. Okay, one well, we are improving this 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 one as we speak. We will have soon a better three uh, D navigation experience. But okay, everything you see in the in the web browser coming from two clouds is mesh based, including the three D navigation. Okay, so everything you see is a uh, uh, low resolution uh, version of all the uh, all the meshes. Uh, of all the scans, but you see only the <clears throat> you see only the vertices of it, not the full surface. But uh, expect a new experience in a in a in a in a, in a few months from now uh, for this one. Okay, and then one last one here. Um, so, since if you already have a Sintu subscription, how do you get access to the Unreal Engine software? Nicholas, you want to explain kind of what you've done? Yeah, yeah. So Unreal is a completely free uh, engine to download. Uh, so you can you can download that from uh, the Unreal Engine website. Um, all you have to do is sign up for uh, for an Unreal account. Uh, it's all completely free to to get in there and start learning and and uh, building uh, within the Unreal Engine. Um, and then to access the uh, the Sintu uh, plugin for Unreal, um, just reach out to us. You can either send uh, email to uh, sales or contact at at sintu.com, the, the email address is on the screen. And uh, we can talk to you about getting access to our, our beta uh, Unreal plugin. Perfect. <clears throat> well, I think that's, uh, that's about it for now. Like I said, if you got any further questions, you know, don't hesitate to send us an email. You can reach us at sales at sintu.com or contact at sintu.com. And as Dominique also mentioned, support at sintu.com. Uh, other than that, I'd like to thank for everybody that was on uh, on the webinar today. I'd also like to thank our guest speakers. Um, I think it was a really informative presentation you all gave, uh, very compelling. So anyway, for that, I'll leave it, uh, we'll end this webinar and let everybody get back to today. But thanks again for joining. Uh, like I said, please feel free to reach out if you have additional questions. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.